Adonis Glad. Okay. My first question is this. Peter, I do not know what a verse is. Maybe Mama Cherry could pull it up. Peter once wrote in his epistle. He once wrote that Christ died for all. The just for the unjust. I need to know. Is there any non-Jewish Gentile on this planet Earth that has ever been unjust? Wait, wait. Can you, can you rephrase the question, please? I'll rephrase the question. Peter wrote in his epistle that Christ died once for all. The just, and we know who the just is. That's Jesus, the just, the righteous one, for the unjust. That would be, you know, those who are not just. In other words, those who are sinners. I need to know, is there, has there ever been a non-Jewish Gentile in the flesh that has been unjust or called unjust in the Bible? Um, I, I think that the question that you're asking is an abuse of the context of the scripture that you're quoting. And it's a, it's right, a, um, it frankly is a loaded question. We have to deal with contextually who the unjust is that he's talking about, not just has anyone ever been unjustified, because contextually you could say anyone has been justified or unjustified. So that that to me, that question is honestly ridiculous. OK, um, there is a problem with you avoiding the yes or no question when you look at what Peter is saying. He does not put a qualifier on the unjust. In other words, he never says the unjust Israelites, the unjust Jews of the diaspora. He doesn't do that. He just says the just for the unjust. And when you look at the context, if you're going to say, let's look at the context, look at who the just is. If I were to ask you, who is the just that is dying for the unjust in this passage? Oh, the just is clearly Christ. That's clear. But the, the, That's the right. question is the unjust. Right. So it says that Christ died and he, Christ, the just one, right? It says that. It says that he died once for all. Now notice that the context is specific on who the just one is. You said that that was Jesus, according to the context. That means all also has a context, and the unjust also has a context. My, so my question is this. On what basis can you say that all and unjust only applies to the Jews if if the context hold on hold on if the context of all and unjust can only apply to human beings right unjust the only people Man. the only beings that are unjust are, are, are people Man. who are what who are sinners Man. So that's my question. What you're asking is a loaded is a loaded question, and your your yeah. question your question can only be asked to me from you when you are able to prove what the context of it is. You're quoting it off the top of your head. You we can clearly see that all three, the just, the unjust, and all, all have a context. But you are quoting off the top of your head. You're not sure about the context of it. So after you find out the context of it, you can give me some concrete proof to validate that. Then you can post that question. Because I don't feel like you present enough qualifications to accurately even ask the question, let alone expect an answer from me. So, and, and, and you also made an assumption about who I said the just and unjust were. No, n only the unjust. You know, no, no, I mean, all, I'm sorry, only, I'm sorry, only the just. I only assumed that you knew who the just was. Right. So, right. Okay. So, my response to you on what you just said is this one, I am confident, and I told you who the unjust was i made a position it is up to you to decide to either a disprove it b 
write it off for whatever reason that you decide to write it off, just as you're doing now, or C, simply, I don't know, just, at, you know, have me move on to somewhere else. So what I'm saying to you is, is that your response is not sufficient. And the reason why it's not is because you know that if you even try to attempt to try to say who the unjust are, you won't be able to do it. And therefore you're actually sliding out of answering the question. No, that no, is my, that, that is my question, view on what you just did. You quote a scripture without even reading it. You admittedly don't even know the context of it because you're, it, it's not in front of you. So I will not sit up here with the level of arrogance that you just had and the level of pride. I just told you. I got you it. I, knew I got the it. It's first Peter chapter three, 18. Yeah, well, I got it right here. Yeah. That you, no, I'm looking at it too, but he didn't do it. He's asking me the question. I'm looking at it, but he didn't do it. So I'm not going to make any presuppositions about who the unjust are. I would first have to read and do a study on this chapter before I start jumping to conclusions like you just did. So that's why your question is insufficient, brother. So moving on. All right. I'm going to move on to something else now. Um, you guys have clearly seen for yourselves. This is my next question. I believe this is in Romans chapter five. And this next verse simply goes something like this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. My question is this. Are only the Israelites ungodly. You have to stop asking if, loaded questions, Matt, you, because because you're abusing the context of every scripture that you're going to. You're, you're doing that's what you're doing. So until you can ask me an honest question, you, you won't get a response from me. Are only the Israelites ungodly? Because it says ungodly here. If that's not eisegesis, if that's not abuse of context, I don't know what in the world. Is, is that your response to me? Are, are only Edomites wicked? Oh, so they're wicked. Is that sinful? No, no, no. I, I, Matt, I'm asking you a question. Are only Edomites wicked? No. Uh, oh, no, no Edomites oh, no, oh, and oh, also uh, all oh, people oh, oh, Matt, have been Matt, deemed as wicked. Matt, Matt. But here's the thing, right? The and Bible, is that sinful? Listen, is Matt, that sinful? Listen, Matt, listen. Um, let me get listening. back to my Romans 5. That, that's fine. Here, here, here's, here's the facts. The Bible calls Edom the wicked, right? But then it also talks about the wicked and the context of that. In Psalms, there's a, 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 a whole chapter where David is calling Saul and his followers the wicked. Then there's another time where it's Edom, Edom is the wicked. So we can go, oh, are all people wicked? Yeah. But then in certain contexts in the Bible, it's talking about a very specific group of wicked people. So that's my point is well, you can't just go see ungodly or is everyone ungodly? You can't do that because that is an abuse of the context of the scripture. That is eisegesis at its worst. All right. And, and it's not even fair for you to ask somebody a loaded question like that. So that's why I said until you can come to me with an honest, well thought, well thought out question. I don't even want to deal with what you're talking about. because You tried to put me in two conundrums with two loaded, totally out of context questions, brother. And you are better than that, man. my brother like that, please, because he, he wasn't being disrespectful to you. Oh, no, no. Let him finish. Let I him finish. I wasn't being disrespectful. If no, no. Let say, him me finish. Saying, me saying shut up was disrespectful. I apologize for saying shut up. But as far as it's OK, I say, go ahead. I don't understand how any of that is disrespectful. That doesn't even make any sense. Just because I said he isogeed, he's asking me questions predicated upon isogesis. That's not disrespectful. It's what he did. No, no, what's disrespectful is the fact that you're telling someone to shut up. And if no, no, you're right. The way around, sir. Let's not get hung so up let's on not that. Do let's that. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right. So, but, but, Adonis, go ahead and finish and let me know when you're done. I finished my, I essentially finished my point. Let me just read, quickly reiterate it again. But what I'm saying is, contextually, the Bible refers to the wicked as different people, the ungodly as different people in different times and different contexts. So do acts a question about what a specific verse and who the ungodly is and make the assumption that it's talking about everybody is taking this out of context and it's unfair to the context and it's an unfair question. So we'll go ahead. Okay. Now that you're done, this is my response to what you said. I asked you who are the ungodly that Christ has died for? And you said once again, for the no, second time, 
You didn't actually. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Matt, Matt. Matt, Matt excuse, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Matt, excuse Matt, me. Matt, no, no, no. Excuse me. Matt, I asked you. Excuse me. No, no. Excuse me. I asked you. Excuse me. Excuse me. I asked you. No, no, no. Excuse me. I asked you. Who are the ungodly? And I, the reason why I asked that was because it's talking about that Jesus did something for these people that are called the ungodly. When I'm finished, you could correct anything that you believe that I said wrong. Thank you. Anyway, the next thing that happened is he had brought up different places outside of Romans 5 that spoke about not the ungodly, but the wicked which is the reason why I asked him, are the wicked sinners? Because wicked and sinful seem to be synonymous, you right? And so the issue is, if the wicked... So, Ruby, is like also, excuse, me, excuse, girl, excuse me, excuse right, me. Okay, see, this is, once again, there's a disrespect. What happened to the maturity? You're better than that, Adonis Glad. Anyway, if the wicked are also classified as sinful then they're also classified as ungodly. I don't think anyone would end up disagreeing with that. So even if he went outside of the scriptures and showed that the Edomites are an example of wicked people and Saul was an example of being someone wicked, you know, and, and, and it could just go on and on, then the issue still stands that when it says that Christ died for the ungodly, you ended up talking about the wicked. I want to know who are the ungodly. And you gave me other examples that were outside of that passage, but it was specific what you had. But when you look at Romans 5, it's not being specific like you're saying, like these specific ungodly people, these specific ungodly people over here. No, it just says the ungodly, almost like it says like the sinner. You know what I mean? So that's the reason why I asked you my question about that. The fact that you once again pulled the same thing saying I'm going to disqualify answering your question because I personally believe that uh, it's not dealing with the context right. And then you don't choose to give a position on who the ungodly are. And I have to assume that the reason why you won't is because of the same reason why you said that you didn't give a position on who the unjust are, because you said that you'll have to go ahead and study that passage. So once again, I'm assuming here that you'll have to do that here, too, since you didn't tell me who the ungodly are and you only gave me these references about the wicked. My issue with that is, is that there is a context when it says the ungodly, you will not answer. You refuse to answer the question or actually acknowledge that there are non-Jewish people that are actually ungodly. Because if you do, you will have to look at that verse and say that, oh, I guess that's somebody that Christ died for, which ends your whole thing about Jesus only died for Israelites, I think that's the reason why, for the second time, you refuse to answer a simple question. You can go to respond, and when you're done, I have another question for you. Well, actually, can I go next? When you're done, actually, after this question, can I actually go next? After yeah, and then I, I want to get the rest of the panelists in here because I'm sure they got questions for them, too, as well. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. G Con, you far away, brother. You gotta. Um... Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wanna, yeah, I just want to leave y'all with uh, 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 three quick, quick scriptures, and then I'm gonna jump out and let somebody jump on the panel, real quick. Uh, uh, there is a um, reason why he says our Father there is because Galatians three and eight is something you want to get to. Just point back to um, Galatians three and eight. Bring that scripture out. Um, Genesis twelve and three. <clears throat> which Paul is referencing that comes to that, uh, which is the gospel, which talks about, I will bless those that bless thee and curse those that curse thee, knowing that he's talking about nations outside of Israel. Um, and he says, he calls them, he says that they can be 
Well, you just read it. Uh, you read. Uh, you read uh, Galatians three and seven, going to Galatians three and eight, and then also pull up uh, um, uh, um, Genesis twelve and three. And so when Paul says that's in reference to the scripture that uh, Gorilla Hebrew brought out when it says our father, because why who who can be called children of Abraham and why he's saying that our father there is very important because Paul recognized these non-Israelites as uh, as uh, being children. And even those who are not uh, uh, Israel, oh, he said they are not all Israel who are Israel. Why? Because they don't they didn't believe in the very promise that God gave Abraham, which is Genesis 12 and 3. And uh, therefore, God came up against them. So those those three scriptures, and also, uh, so real, if you remember the little lesson we did on uh, when we talked about uh, uh, Tobit, when we talked about Tobit on who the Gentiles is, bring out that Tobit uh, 13, uh, bring out also that um, <clears throat> uh, Peter, when Peter was talking to uh, you are royal priesthood of nations of people, and that leads all the way back to that Tobit 13. So you know this already, so real. And then also that um, one more scripture. Uh, uh, the, the killer is Romans 15. That's who Paul, Paul, if you read Romans 15, it talks about who the Gentiles is and how they can be blessed with Israel uh, just as well. And these are non-Israelites who Paul is talking to. 